Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Hope you all are doing well. So uh, in this video, we are generally going to practice uh, risk uh, MCQs based on risk in banking sector. Okay, so uh, we'll go through uh, uh, the different different types of risk and uh, uh, the basal norms related MCQs or the other one. Okay, so uh, please uh, do like this uh, video and do watch till the end. And if you are new to my channel, so please do subscribe. So without any delay, we will start with first question and try to answer these particular question in comment section. Okay, so first statement or first question is generally based on different type of risk. So whenever you study risk, so we have these are further classified into two part. One is systematic risk. Another one is unsystematic risk. Systematic risk, they are um, unavoidable in nature. They have a broader impact and unsystematic risk, they are limited to a particular uh, in to, to an individual or to a particular firm okay so out of these given statement you have to identify the correct one so systematic risk risk which uh, affect the entire market as you can take an example of inflation recession world war condition okay so statement one is correct unsystematic risk is uh, unique and peculiar to a firm or industry again this is also correct like uh, employee strike or uh, system failures or uh, the problem with internet connections so these are generally part of unsystematic risk they are avoidable in nature so um, we can control uh, uh, the unsystematic type of risk okay so statement one and two both are correct so option c will be right answer for this particular question See guys, whenever you study um, risk in any sector, you will find two types of risk. Systematic, unavoidable in nature, uncontrollable, non-controllable in nature. And they have a broader impact. They have a, a like we can say, uh, they, they generally impact the entire economy or the world economy. Okay, so like the situation of uh, a recession. So that is part of your systematic risk. Unsystematic risk, they are peculiar to a firm. So, or individual like um, employee strike and bank is uh, type of your um, unsystematic risk. Internet failure or system failure is generally part of your unsystematic risk. They are avoidable in nature. You can control these kind of risk. Okay. Uh, next question. Dash type of risk with the effect uh, which affect the entire market. So, as I gave you an example of recession. So, what will be your correct answer? Systematic risk. So, systematic risk, they are unavoidable in nature so that generally affect the entire market okay next question guys which of the following risk is part of banking sector okay so if you study a uh, banking sector so there are so many risks which is involved in banking sector as well so first one is market risk so banks are part of market if anything let's say if anything happened with the uh, bad uh, if anything happened bad with the market so that is definitely going to affect your bank so it is part of uh, banking sector risk. Liquidity risk, when liquidity is, uh, the term liquidity that means converted into cash. So when any bank, they won't be able to convert their assets into cash, okay? So that is liquidity as a risk. Operational risk, like system failure, employee strike, that is part of bank. Credit risk, when bank, they lended money to our customers and these customers become defaulted. So that is your credit risk. So all the above are generally part of your, uh, uh, these are the risks which is involved in banking business. Okay, so um, banking business is very dynamic in nature. So where bank is generally borrowing money from customer and they are lending to the customers. So in, in between this particular transaction borrowing and lending, there are so many risks which is generally involved. Okay, next one, uh, the risk that change in laws and regulation will uh, materially affect security business, uh, security business sector market as well. So if any regulatory body, when they are coming with some new compliances, some new rules and regulation, and it affect uh, in an adverse, it basically it affect the profit of banks in an adverse manner. So that is generally known as your regulatory risk. Okay, so market risk we already discussed like uh, interest rate risk, uh, the equity risk, they are generally part of market risk, okay. Liquidity, we discussed uh, when bank, they uh, don't be won't be able to uh, convert their asset into cash. Operational, if there is any uh, failure of operation, credit, 
when uh, this default situation is happened. Regulatory risk is when basically uh, uh, there are some changes in the compliance, there are some new guidelines given by RBI for bank and uh, as per these particular guidelines or uh, after these particular guidelines, they, there is a uh, there, there is an adverse impact on the uh, profit of banks. So that is generally known as uh, regulatory risk. Okay. Next one. The Basel Committee on Banking Supervision, BCBS, Secretariat is located in. So BCBS was uh, founded by BIS, Bank for International Settlement. Okay. Uh, and if you talk about the headquarter of BIS or uh, the Secretariat of uh, BCBS that both is located in Basel. Okay, so Basel is a place in Switzerland. So Basel, Switzerland will be correct answer for this particular question. So BIS was founded in 1930 and uh, BIS they created one committee in 1974 that is generally known as BCBS, Basel Committee on Banking Supervision and uh, it generally provide uh, the guidelines for uh, banking operation so what are the current risk and on the basis of current risk what should be the suitable uh, uh, decisions of bank or how they should uh, cope with these kind of uh, risk so that is generally part of your bcbs i hope you guys heard about the basel 1 basel 2 basel 3 so these all are the guidelines set of guidelines which is released by um, uh, uh, bcbs so first basel was announced in 1988 and uh, second was uh, launched in 2004 and third was announced in 2010 post uh, 2008 uh, recession okay let's move to the next one that's the possibility of losses that uh, may arise due to uh, various uncertainties is called so this is a basic definition of risk so risk is the possibility of loss in future okay so in when you study in finance it is possibility of financial losses in the future so risk profit you know loss you know uh, has is basically to minimize your risk arbitrage is buying in one market and selling in another market right so possibility of future losses or future financial losses is basically defined as risk next one recession is an example of which type of risk so i so many times we discuss this particular term so I hope now you will be able to answer this question. So what will be your correct answer? Systematic risk. So recession, whenever we announce recession, so it, ha uh, it has a worldwide impact. Okay. So when world economy is continuously uh, decreasing over uh, two or uh, more uh, quarters, so that is generally known as uh, recession. Okay. So it has a worldwide impact. So it is like it has a broader impact. So that's why it is generally known as uh, systematic risk it is unavoidable in nature next one employee strike so employee strike is an example of which type of risk again uh, so what will be your correct answer it is part of your operational risk employees are part of operation okay so when they uh, went on a strike so it will affect the uh, uh, operation of any bank so it is generally part of your operational risk okay so whenever you talk about operational risk anything which is related to operation so it can be like if you if you talk about the uh, risk in operation like employee strike transaction risk so some wrong transaction happened communication risk documentation risk cultural risk and system risk so these are generally major risk which is generally involved in uh, the operation okay next one when an individual investor business or financial institution cannot meet its uh, short-term debt obligation so that type of risk is generally known as liquidity risk okay so uh, credit is when uh, the, the, the bank the customer become defaulter liquidity when uh, these entities are uh, won't be able to meet their short-term debt requirements strategic there is some strategy failure regulatory so compliances changes and all that is generally part of regulatory risk okay so liquidity is when liquidity means converted into cash when any bank or other institution they won't be able to convert their asset into um, cash or they have a, a like short term debt requirements so um, uh, so that is generally or even they they won't be able to pay their debt obligation short term debt obligation so that is generally part of your liquidity risk next one uh, the possibility of default by a borrower 
to meet its uh, debt obligation is categorized under so what will be your correct answer now credit risk so credit risk means when a bank give loan to any customer and that customer become defaulter so that kind of situation or that kind of risk in banking is generally known as credit risk so bank they use different different tool or different different rating agencies to overcome with these kind of uh, problems like we have uh, uh, civil uh, that is uh, I hope you guys heard about these civil ratings, okay? So Credit Bureau of uh, Credit Bureau of um, uh, India Limited, okay? And uh, even not only civil for uh, IPO rating, we have ICRA Care, or even for Economies rating, we have Moody's, Fitch, uh, the other like IMF, World Bank. They also do. They also provide rating for Economies, right? Next one, risk that arise on an account of uh, adverse business decision or improper implementation of decision so i hope you remember this one so what will be your correct answer it is a strategic failure so when uh, there are some wrong strategy adopted by any company or any management so due to uh, this wrong decision they made some losses so that is strategic failure so they have a good plan but at the time of implementation so there is a failure in implementation so that is generally part of your strategic failure so that is uh, due to this particular losses, so or this failure, they uh, face some losses. So that is generally known as strategic risk. Next one, which of the following statement is are correct regard regarding BCBS? So I hope you remember uh, BCBS. So it is a committee which is uh, established by uh, BIS, Bank for International Statement. So BCBS stand for Basel Committee on Banking Supervision. Okay. So first statement, Basel Committee was developed by Basel Committee on Banking Supervision, BCBS. The BCBS was established in 1974, which is again correct. Governor of a group of 10 countries. Basel norms are international banking regulation, which is also correct. So what will be a correct answer? Option D will be right answer for this particular one. So why uh, we study Basel norms whenever you study risk? Because the major objective of Basel norms was to protect international banking or any kind of uh, bank failures across the globe. Okay, so BIS, the one of the oldest uh, financial institution, was founded in uh, 1930. Okay, Bank for International Settlement, which is uh, uh, it is located in Basel, Switzerland, and they form a committee in 1974, which is known as BCBS, Basel Committee on banking supervision so uh, initially when uh, it was formed so there was a group of 10 companies and uh, the central banker or the um, governor of central bank is generally member of this uh, this particular committee so like as the time evolved we generally face new challenges so how to cope with these particular challenges they uh, this committee they they, uh, uh, they they do research on these particular areas and they provide the guidelines and these guidelines are generally known as basal norms right next one the minimum capital requirement was fixed at um, what percent of risk weight asset in basal one so what will be a correct answer eight percent so risk weight assets are like um, a central bank they generally issue guidelines uh, regarding risk weight asset okay like in home loans we do not have any risk so in car loan it is different in personal loan it is higher side okay so if any bank is giving loan in uh, risky assets so let's say there is a bank who gave loan in risky asset of 100 crore rupees so on the behalf of this 100 crore rupees they have to maintain some capital buffer so in basel one it was eight percent so they have to maintain a capital buffer of 8 crore rupees as per basel one guidelines okay so this is totally decided by the central bank of uh, any economy so like in india it is decided by the rbi reserve bank of india right so a risk weight asset please do remember this one the full form sometimes they ask the full form as well effective use of disclosure as uh, a lever uh, to strengthen uh, the market discipline was introduced in um, which basal norm so market discipline was part of your basal 2 so first time it was introduced in basal 2 and um, even it is part of basal 3 as well so there were three pillars of basal 2 so out of these three pillars we have this uh, market discipline as well okay so option 
uh, B will be right answer for this particular question. Next one, guys. Which of the following statement is are correct about Basel three? So it was launched in two thousand ten, which is correct. These guidelines were introduced in response of financial crisis of two thousand eight. Again, the after the uh, failure of Lehman Brother Bank. So a world economy they generally face a recession that time. Okay, so after that. Basel Committee they release uh, guidelines uh, for uh, banking system. So these guidelines are generally known as uh, Basel Three, and these were issued in two thousand ten. A need uh, was felt to further strengthen uh, the uh, uh, bank system in developed economies were uh, undercapitalized, overleveraged, and had a greater uh, reliance on short term funding. Okay, so again this is a correct statement. so all the above statement are correct so now if you talk about the statement c so it is like uh, uh, previously we were generally focusing on developed or sorry underdeveloped and developing countries but after this lemon brother bank failure so we uh, we uh, uh, or this committee regionally analyzed the, these um, developed countries banks are under uh, capitalized they have over leverage so uh, and even they are they are generally doing short term funds okay so to deal with these particular problems in 2010 uh, basel 3 guidelines were released okay so these guidelines basel 3 is very very important for all of you so please go through these particular guidelines and read it through thoroughly so this is definitely going to help you in your upcoming examination next one basel 1 accord was established in which year so what will be a correct answer 1988 okay so first the committee bcbs was founded in 1974 and the guidelines the first time they released the guidelines set of guidelines so these guidelines are called basel 1 and these guidelines were released in 1988 okay july 1988 and india adopted in 1999 which of the following statement is are correct regarding basel 1 so it was introduced in 1988 Uh, it focuses almost entirely on credit risk. Again, this is correct. Credit risk is possibility of losses resulting uh, uh, from a borrower's failure to uh, repay a loan. So all statements are correct. So basically, that time in 1988, we are facing a credit risk problem uh, across the globe. So basically, borrower they are taking money from the um, banks and they become defaulters. So to deal with these kind of situations. In nineteen eighty-eight, Basel Committee they released this one. Okay, so these are some outcome like nineteen eighty-eight. It was based on credit risk, so uh, it decided uh, risk uh, uh, risk weight asset at eight percent. And India implemented and Basel norms in nineteen ninety-nine. Okay, so uh, in which of the following year India adopted Basel one guidelines? So now this question become very easy. So it was uh, adopted by India in nineteen ninety-nine. So like. when uh, basel committee they release these particular guideline in, in 1888 we start implementing but it is it was fully implemented in india by 1999 because we have so many guidelines we cannot adopt all these guidelines in one go because we we have to evolve the entire banking system right so it take time by 1999 it was fully implemented in india next one basel 2 guidelines were published um Uh, by bcbs in which year so what will be a correct answer 2004 okay so option b is the right answer for this particular question next one basel 3 guidelines were uh, published by bcbs in which year so what will be a correct answer 2010 so i with the first question i gave you um, these particular years i hope you guys remember and you will be able to answer these questions so basel 3 the latest one the recent one was uh, uh come uh, came after the uh, 2008 uh, recession global recession after the failure of lemon brother bank okay uh, so uh, these were launched in 2010 and even we are implementing if you talk about the india so we are implementing basel third guidelines only okay with reference to a uh, banking system rwa stand for so i hope this uh, you will be able to answer this question so what will be correct answer risk weighted asset so risk weighted asset okay option 1 will be correct answer risk weighted asset will be right answer for this particular one okay next one consider the following statement regarding a risk so you have to go through these statement systematic risk is unavoidable in nature which is correct unsystematic avoidable in nature 
uh, high inflation is an example of unsystematic risk so unsystematic risk is basically avoidable in nature high inflation is unsystematic risk so this is this become wrong labor strike is an example of unsystematic risk which is correct because it, it is avoidable in nature okay so now which of the above statement is incorrect so uh, option 3 means uh, c option c will be correct answer for this particular question i hope you guys are able to uh, answer this particular question easily still if you face any problem guys feel free to reach me and do mention in comment section about any point any concept okay so i'll try to answer your queries now which of the following is correctly defined currency risk the risk that exchange rate um, will go up or possibly uh, possibly down or adverse to the consumer uh, customer position so statement one is correct uh, currency risk is like let's say uh, for one dollar the current rate is 82 INR so you buy this dollar let's say you make a buy position you buy uh, this currency pair up uh, now what is the risk so after some time one dollar equal to it become 80 rupees so this is like the value of dollar is getting down so when you will sell this dollar you will get only 80 rupees so that situation it is a it is an adverse situation uh, according to your market portfolio so that is generally known as currency risk equity same in equity as well let's say you buy share of um, state bank of india at uh, 330 rupees let's say you buy share of uh, state bank of india at 330 rupees after up uh, your profit will be when it the share price will goes up like let's say if after some time it become 340 rupees so you will get 10 rupees per share but what is equity risk after some time the prices become 3 uh, 20 rupees so you made a loss of 10 rupees so this is called your equity risk inflation risk is it is something related to your real income concept okay so you invest let's say you invested 100 rupees at the rate of 7 percent so after one year your money will uh, be 107 rupees now during that particular period this is your nominal income okay so let's say during that particular period inflation is grow by nine percent so now your real income will be what will be your real income real income will be minus two how it come minus two real income is basically interest minus inflation so interest is seven percent inflation is nine percent so your investment went in negative so that is called uh, your um, you know uh, real income concept so the uh, potential for inflation to increase to the prices of goods and services so that is may uh, like as inflation increase every every rupee you own by a smaller percentage so the value of your domestic currency will goes down interest rate risk so interest rate risk is like when interest rate is behaving adverse to your market position okay so that is interest rate this is the risk arising uh, from the adverse movement of the interest rate during the period when um, uh, when uh, the asset or liability was held by a bank so all of the above are correct with re with respect to uh, their definition okay so these definitions are very important guys please uh, go through this particular definition and still if you have any uh, problem with any point please uh, do mention in comment section so i'll try to um, solve your queries as well okay so currency equity inflation and interest rate risk next question which of the following is correctly defined so again we have currency i hope you remember the uh, risk that the exchange rate will go up or possibly down equity we already discussed this one inflation interest okay so this is a repeat question actually so all of the above will be correct answer for this particular one next one uh, which of the following is incorrectly defined so now you have to identify the incorrect one okay so go through this particular definition carefully okay i'll hide myself so first one is operational risk it is uh, the risk that arise due to fail uh, internal process so again like people system and all so this is the correct one strategic risk that arise on account of adverse business decision correct one credit the uh, risk bank where possibility by defaults correct regulatory change in regulatory compliances so all are correct which means what will be your correct answer option uh, e will be correct answer none of the above okay so all of the above are correctly defined with respect to uh, different type of risk okay 
so please uh, quickly go through this particular definition if you have any query guys please uh, feel free to ask i'll uh, uh, try to explain your queries as well okay next one which of the following statement is incorrect regarding basel one so basel one uh, it was introduced in 1974 so this is incorrect you have to identify the incorrect one okay so it was introduced in 1888 okay in 19 sorry 1988 in uh, 19 74 BCBS was formed. <laughs> the uh, minimum capital was fixed at 8%, which is correct. India adopted Basel 1 in 1999, correct. It focused on uh, credit risk, it is also correct. So, what will be a correct answer? Option A will be right answer because it is an incorrect statement about Basel 1. Okay, next one. <coughs> Which of the following statement is correct? Incorrect regarding Basel 2. So, Basel 2 guidelines were published in 2004. This is a correct statement. Uh, these are defined, uh, refined and reformed uh, version of Basel 1 accord. Again, correct. The guidelines were based on four parameters, which uh, uh, the committee called uh, pillars. So, again, correct. Okay. So, what will be a correct answer? D, none of the above. So, all are the correct statements. Okay. So, uh, so uh, your answer should be this one. So, I missed this one. Uh, it should be not four it is based on three parameters right so your answer will be c okay please do correct this one option c will be correct answer because these are generally based on three pillars okay not four pillars huh i missed this one so these three pillars were capital adequacy ratio supervisory review and market discipline so these are nowadays called pillars of basel and these three pillars were introduced during basel 2 please do remember this one okay so this is the hack please do remember this one next one which of the following is incorrect regarding uh, basel 3 so incorrect so basel 3 was introduced in 2010 correct these guidelines were introduced in response of financial crisis again correct a uh, need uh, was felt further stunting the bank developed economies and all so we gone through this statement again correct it was also a uh, felt that the uh, Quantity uh, and quality of capital under Basel 2 were uh, deemed insufficient. So this is also correct. So what will be a correct answer? None of the above. So all statements are correct. So none of the above will be correct answer for this particular statement. Okay. So Basel 3, we already gone through these particular guidelines. I hope you remember. So these are the major uh, or we can say key takeaways from uh, Basel 3rd. Okay. Chalo. So I already did a video on... Uh, financial market where we discuss a uh, top 50 mcqs based on financial market i divided this video into two part i hope you guys already watched if not please go and watch that particular video that is definitely going to help you in your upcoming examination okay so guys uh, here we uh, discuss uh, top uh, uh, top most question based on your uh, risk management in banking sector or um, the basic type of risk i hope you guys enjoy this particular video so if you like please do share with your friends and um, do like the video and if you are new to my channel please do subscribe and one request to all of you guys uh, whenever i come with any mcq session so first i come with um, one um, fundamental video based on that particular topic so i already did fundamental video first uh, you should watch the fundamental one and then go for uh, this uh, uh, then then go for uh, the, uh, uh, the the MCQ session okay so if you go for the fundamental one now so you will easily you will be able to answer these particular question and uh, it, it will it will boost your morale okay so uh, hope you enjoying these particular videos and if you liking so please I, this is my humble request to all of you guys please do share with others so other can also join these particular videos and they can also take benefit of these particular one very soon i'll come with telegram group as well so where you can download the pdfs but pdf is just uh, like we create repository the only thing is you you need a proper understanding regarding these particular topics so if you have a proper understanding so uh, then you have you go through these particular practice questions so you will be able to make uh, good marks in your upcoming examination so this is it from my side. Thank you for the watching this particular video. Hope you enjoy. Uh, so I'll see you soon with a new video. Thank you.